this talk comes with a pass around material, so I'm going to pass it around. Um, but uh, I got to teach out of it next semester, so do me a favor, don't rip any pages out or anything like that. <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, that's, uh, that's, a, that's the abstract. So you notice that I have a, a, it's a linear algebra book, and I'm going in the, uh, uh, what you probably also have noticed is the <laughs> wrong direction. So every other talk uh, at this meeting has been about somehow bringing things online or, uh, uh, well, this is the opposite. This is dropping from <coughs> online down to the... Uh, Euler. Oh, yes. Yeah, Euler. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, so I, I, uh, in, in all honesty here, I have to confess that um, this, uh, this presentation is giving me some trouble. So it's, uh, it's like it's haunted or something. So, uh, or maybe possessed is the right word. So I apologize. You'll have to bear with me if it, uh, if it fails on me. Uh, there it goes. I think it's because it's a linear algebra book. Some, <laughs> somehow, it, uh, some, somehow it gets taken over by the matrix. So, um, so uh, it's I guess you're running in a virtual box. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so I have to. Uh, you just have to just have to live with the. I apologize. With the, so, so, uh, so the the bullet points there are that it's uh, been available for a long time. That it's uh, something in the neighborhood of 500 pages. And, uh, and that it's free. Okay, so that's the that's for the rest of the talk. That's the the, the sort of takeaway part to remember. Um, back in whatever it was, 1996. I'm not 100% sure when I first put it up, but uh, some time spent on the Wayback Machine makes me think it's 1996. Um, uh, so back in 1996, I used to read a lot online about how the online was the future. Um, so, uh, so I decided I was going to put the book online. I, 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 at the time, I didn't know of any of the books that were online, but no doubt there were. But, um, but so I was you know, really gung-ho. So it was going to be online only. And uh, so this is how you, how you got it. You went to the web page, and maybe you read the, you know, the text here and convinced yourself that it's the greatest thing since uh, olive oil. And, and, uh, you, know, and, and you, you downloaded the book and maybe only read the first pages. But, but anyway, you still you, you downloaded the book. So, uh, so the model of how I was thinking, how these things at least worked in 1996, is that um, the instructor, uh, instructor sucked it down, printed it on a printer, you know, down the hall, right, and then brought it to Kinko's, all right, and Kinko's uh, 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 ran it off um, and maybe put it in a comb binding or a three ring binder or whatever it is, and, uh, and you're in business. So that determines a couple things about the text. So item number one is uh, is U.S. letter because that's what I had down the hall from my office. Right, it's a printer with U.S. letter. Item two is that in 1996 the printers, at least the printers available to me, were 300 DPI. And there's a lot of things you can't do with 300 DPI. In particular, shading is really an issue with 300 DPI. Yeah. Uh, and then the last thing here is uh, the, uh, the Euler, which Carl, uh, maybe Carl forgets, but he has already yelled at me for uh, many times in the past, uh, is that computer modern, uh, if, you, if you print it at 300 dpi and then you Xerox it at a Kinko's, many of the letters lose parts. That's just all there is to it. They just lose parts. So, uh, so I went to something that was more, what, what would be the technical word there, uh, uh, robust or... Uh, uh, Thicker or well, whatever the right robust, word is, yeah. robust. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so a lot of things that you're seeing were determined by the printing technology available at the time. And the last one down here I'm going to return to later is that uh, you can't be too ambitious with color <laughs> for a number of reasons. Okay, so uh, uh, I sometimes got requests for paper copies. Um, uh, you know, I literally had people send me cash in the mail. It's hard to believe, but people do it cash in the mail, here's $50 kind of thing, send me a copy of the book, and I had to return the cash in the mail. I always felt a little funny about that. <laughs> I, well, I told them I don't want to be in the business of uh, returns, you know, the, the book got ripped up in the mail, or I just don't want to do that. That's, you know, I'm, so, so I'm not going to do that, so you have to get it online, but I did always feel a little funny about it. Uh, I also, some potential adopters would tell me that uh, I, I like the book, but I won't adopt it because it requires me to go to Kinko's. So I absolutely have had that, um, heard that. Uh, actually, at my institution, um, uh, I, used to, I used to bring it to the copy shop at my institution, and uh, the copy shop manager, he's an awful nice guy, he would let me run it off, and then I'd carry the books over. 
you know, to the, uh, to the bookstore. And so one day the coffee shop manager and the bookstore manager were having coffee and they said, you know, why don't we just, I'll carry it to you directly. And that almost got the two of them fired. I don't really understand why, but their boss, their mutual boss, said you can't do that. And a week later, their mutual boss got fired. So, <laughs> so, so when somebody says, you know, that at my institution this is an issue, I, I guess I don't understand why, but I, I guess that it can happen. Yeah. So strange uh, institutions are strange places. Another place that I get uh, uh, interest in in different versions from is various entrepreneurs. This one now now this one. Can you see it was sent to me last April 1st? <laughs> I think that that's a coincidence. I think, because it's very typical. I get such, uh, such emails. Rob Beezer, of course, has a, has a free book. Rob, do you get to these kind of things? Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't shown you the rest of the letter. This is only the first half of the proposal. <laughs> so this person, I imagine, I have in my mind a mental image of a, a young person. Um, and has just graduated from college and wants to solve the textbook problem. And that's how they're gonna. That's how they're gonna make their living. Which is, I would be great if somebody could solve the textbook problem. So uh, it has a lot of words: open publication system and pull requests and stuff. And what their basic idea is is they're gonna have a reader for this stuff. And people are able to highlight. It, uh, you know how students take those big crayons and they color the book various colors? So people are going to be able to highlight things in the book and then they're going to, that gives him a clue about which things are most important in the book as though what students highlighted was what was most important. But, but, but so that gives him a clue and then that somehow he thinks that that's, um, I don't know, maybe he's right, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But, but so I get a lot of these. I don't know, Rob, one a month? Okay, one a month, one every other month kind of thing. So there are requests of this kind. I consider this a legitimate request, and I don't have any problem with it whatsoever. Um, but I get some, I get some uh, requests for other versions that I, I consider to be, uh, again, Carl and I have had a discussion about this in the past, but I consider this to be a little shady. So here's a copy of my book. It's now like five years old, but it's for sale on Amazon for, you guys can't read that, but it says $999.99. <laughs> <laughs> you, use this cheaper. But you, 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 so this one says five hundred and twelve dollars in some some odd sense. This one, this one is quite reasonable. I I, I think it's uh, thirty six dollars. Um, no, one thirty six. One thirty six. Oh, yeah. forgive me. One thirty six. Uh, now, I actually, I think these are mistakes on the part of Amazon, but I'm not 100% sure, but because they all have the same cover there, so I, I, I have a sense that that's a mistake. I know who produced this copy, so oh, I mean, I have some idea who produced this copy. This one down here, I have no idea who produced it. It's just somebody who decided they could go around the internet and grab free books and put them up for sale. Does it say $51.99? $51.99. So uh, it's good work if you can get it, I guess. Um, <laughs> And it is on. It satisfies the license requirements and everything. That's all perfectly true. But I don't know. You know, it doesn't really seem 100% right. You know, it's it's like the guy who go, who goes to an all-you-can-eat buffet and stays for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, <laughs> technically it is all you can eat, but you know, it doesn't really seem right. You know. Also, I apologize. This darn thing is giving me trouble here. But so uh, so the, uh, so the, in this day and age, isn't this what you think of? So, uh, so I got any, oh, what's going on there? Oh, that's, that's, there we go, that's right. So, uh, so I got an email from this guy who was using my book, and uh, uh, he, he, he didn't send his picture in the email, I added that later. Um, so, uh, so he was telling me about his experience with using the book, and, uh, and you can see for yourself that he says uh, that when he first started using the book, the fact that it was produced at Kinko's was an issue. You know, people are funny. It doesn't. It isn't logical. It's psychological. It doesn't make any sense. But people gave him trouble because the book was produced at Kinko's. So, uh, so he wrote a bunch of other things. I, I excerpted them a lot. But, but in particular, he said here uh, two things. Studies have shown that many students, even up to seventy-five percent, still prefer a print to an electronic. And I have to confess that in my classes, never mind me, but in my classes with the twenty-year-olds in front of me. They, uh, this last summer, for example, I taught out an electronic book, and they all asked me, how do you get a paper? 
So I'm finding that that's not, that, that I think that 75% could be right. You know how it is with statistics on the internet, but I think that 75% could be right. And then the second thing, more to the point for those of us who are university professors, this is you know, really the money, uh, the money coming in. So uh, significantly higher class evaluations uh, is, is always an inducement. So his proposal essentially, after a, a little bit of a, a backs and forth and, and some history, his proposal is he started, I don't, I, the legality I don't really understand, L3C, it's called a low profit company, and so he, he said, uh, I'll take uh, free books and I'll, with, with the cooperation of the author, I will uh, bring them into paper availability. So, uh, so, so there we go, I'm, uh, you know, I swallow in the red pill and, and it's, it's, uh, it's on the paper. So uh, this is uh, gets annoying after a while, but 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 so there we go. That's the question everybody always asks me, including my wife. Everybody always <laughs> asks me, um, you know, what's the what's the deal? What's the deal with money? And um, spe you know, speaking of my wife, I'm I'm a, a treasurer of a club that I'm in, and uh, every time I say something about treasure, my wife just kind of laughs, you know, because uh, me me and money are not uh, not really well acquainted. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so this fellow Lon is going to be a big help at, at working me through this system. Um, and in particular, he explained to me that there are two entities in this world, uh, in the world of self-publishing that you have to be familiar with. And those two entities uh, are Amazon, everybody knows about Amazon, but the other entity is this uh, company called uh, Ingram. Uh, Amazon, again, I don't think they need an explanation, but Ingram, uh, if somebody knows more than I do, I, well, I'm sure almost everybody knows more than I do, but I'd appreciate being corrected. Roughly speaking, Ingram is the people who carry the books from one place to the other. If uh, your local bookstore wants to get a copy of, you know, Jane Austen, they go to Ingram Ford. Okay, so if you're in their channel, you're in places where uh, other people can get you. Okay, this is from the, the self... And they supply Amazon. They do, oh yes, yeah, absolutely. But so this is from the selfpub.net FAQ. I didn't know FAQs really were around anymore, but uh, <laughs> this seemed to be reasonably up to date, and it basically says you want your book in the distribution channel. Because once you get in that distribution channel, then you show up for sale all kinds of other places. And for example, if somebody doesn't have you in stock, then they request a copy from these folks. So although I had never heard of those folks when this process started, they seemed to be the people you wanted to talk to. As opposed to Amazon, which was my first thought. Uh, there are other folks, of course, there are Lulu, and uh, I know people in the room can name lots of other people, and uh, I got nothing against those other folks, but uh, uh, Lon has given me advice about what he thinks is the best thing to do, and, and uh, what's the point of having an advisor if you're not going to take the advice, so I, uh, so, so, uh, so I went with Ingram. I wanted to talk about Amazon uh, just uh, just for a second. Um, uh, uh, Dick, the other day, uh, he said, uh, I'm sorry if it's not exactly right, Dick, but so Amazon will sell you everything from a swaddling clothes to a casket, right? But uh, uh, Amazon would only sell you, what was it, 45 uh, USB sticks? Well, uh, similarly, too, um, Amazon will, apparently, that my bookstore manager informs me, Amazon will only sell you four copies of my book. Four, you know, where'd they come up with that? You know, uh, 45, where'd that one come from, you know? So, uh, so Amazon is to some extent um, uh, like the Department of Defense, you know? You, you, they make decisions and possibly if you were in the meeting you'd understand those decisions, but I don't understand those decisions. I don't understand what, why they do that. So that's why I have the title there. It is that Amazon is, you know, is the 800-pound gorilla, and um, uh, uh, although a person perfectly sensibly going with Amazon, um, nonetheless, there are costs there, and, <laughs> and, and in particular, you may find yourself dealing with, uh, with, with someone who is more than a little scary sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to get a picture of Agent Smith, where, where he, where he you know, bifurcates into hundreds of Agent Smiths, but I thought it maybe it wouldn't show up on the projector, but, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. And just also, frankly, a personal sense of not liking to deal with too big. Yeah. 
But so uh, a person, of course, talking about money wants to talk about revenue and cost. So I have a, a brief uh, page about revenue, and uh, I promise I'm going to get to some tech eventually in some 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 point. So uh, uh, we, meaning Lon and I, meaning whoever writes a book, tells uh, tells the retailers what price to charge the buyers, and we also tell the retailers what the discount is. That is what the retailer's profit will be. Standard discount is 55%. If you go down and buy Harry Potter from the local bookstore, you know, they, they get 55% of the cover price. But you can reduce that discount. If you can get the people to continue selling the book, then, then you're in good shape. Well, online people will take a 25% discount, college bookstores also. But if you want Barnes & Noble physical bookstore, they won't take a 25% discount. They just say, we, we, we can't stay in business that way. So I wanted to I wanted to make the book available for a, a, a really reasonably small price. So we went with a 25% discount, and that pretty much means online. Okay, I, I don't really don't think people are going to be buying my book at Barnes and Noble, so I, I didn't think that was a loss. Yeah. The cost. Now remember, a couple slides ago, beginning of the talk, I said eight and a half by eleven is the original size of the book because that was the printer that was down my hall. Well, eight and a half by eleven isn't what they want to make. They want to make these somewhat peculiar sizes. I assume these mean something in centimeters or something. I don't know. But they want to make these peculiar sizes, and so I, I wanted to pick one of those. The uh, Evidently, 6.14 by 9.21 is the common one. Whoops, I'm sorry. I went too fast. Is the common one, but uh, I, I wanted to, to go with 7.5 by 9.25 because it's uh, still possible in that case to use, because I to use the... Uh, the LaTeX uh, standard line length of 345 points. And so you can still print the book out on a, on a, on a printer down the hall, and it's still usable, se sensible. Uh, so. so it's a compromise. All these things are compromises. If, uh, if all this stuff is too much for you, you can just, uh, Amazon has, you know, a, or any of these people have a, have a calculator. And I put the numbers in there, and you can see it, it says 515. So that's a little bit of a preview of how much profit. Uh, profit I'm going to make per book. Oh, oh, I went past the, uh, no, no, I saved it. I did it right. And then the, uh, the, the last item is there's, there's some additional costs and some additional things to think about. The, uh, there's a setup cost. I think that's, uh, remember, it used to be when you bought a car, one of the lines said ADP, and it turned out after a couple of years that meant additional dealer profit. So I think that's a setup cost to me. That's what it seems to me. Uh, and uh, annual listing fees and the ISBNs. The ISBNs strike you as kind of a one-time charge, and you don't have to worry about it. Except any time you make a change, really, you need to change the ISBN, a significant change. And so you can run yourself, you know, twenty-five dollars at a time into uh, uh, into some into some money. Um, one thinking I showed you the five dollars fifteen. One thinking was that. Uh, uh, we, we might want to make a little bit extra money so that we can give some books away for free, for example, at the annual math meeting kind of stuff. There's a table, there was at the last meeting, was a table of free books, and so it's nice to have a, sort of a dozen of your book at the table. People can pick up and leaf through kind of stuff. Okay, and, and then finally, the last thing, that, the thing that people often ask me about is uh, how can you make any profit at all if the book is free? And the answer is, uh, I don't think that you understand how marketing works at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if somebody Googles linear algebra, I'm on the first page. So they click on me, and there they are on my web page, and it says the book has disadvantages, disadvantages, and it says under no circumstances use Rob Beezer's book, it says. <laughs> and, and, then, uh, and then it says download or buy a paper copy. And uh, I think the average user is not at that point going to go to the, buy a paper copy, see what it costs there, and say, oh, I wonder if I can get it cheaper. I think they're just going to buy it. It's been my experience. Okay. So the takeaway, if you you know you don't want to remember all this stuff, you is that uh, we charge twenty bucks. Okay, that's really for media costs. I mean, you know, that's we charge twenty bucks. A third of that goes into physical printing. A third of that goes to the seller, and a third of that is left over for for uh, uh, Lon and I to split. Okay. Okay. So enough about money. So now uh, now I want to talk about the actual actually what happened. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the outside of the book, and then I'm going to talk about the inside of the book. 
So first, the outside of the book is uh, the, the cover has to be one file and all this kind of stuff. There are requirements about what you can do, what you can't do. In particular, the consideration that I ran into was uh, there's no printing on the inside of the cover. So I had a uh, table of notations on the inside of the cover. So I have to, um, I, I have, to have a flag in my driver file that says uh, if we're printing on paper, then uh, move the table of notations. I had to create a whole new page, a title page, and then move the table of notations to the back of the title page. So that, uh, that, that flag is good for a couple of other things. For example, in the online, the, the PDF version of the book, a link is blue, as it so often is. A link is blue, and when you print that on paper, it comes out kind of a little bit gray. So, uh, you know, just to be anal about it, I made it come out black kind of stuff. And a couple other places. You want to you want to have paper slightly different than than happens with the book. Okay, and and the the scary part here is on the back cover. I had to make up some marketing text, and that's and I I don't have a gift for that. I can tell you. That. <laughs> so there's the there's the eventual cover. Of course, I'm passing it around so you can see the cover um, in what came around. The difficulty I had with the cover is. Uh, uh, I, uh, I was thinking, you know, what am I going to do for cover, what am I going to do for cover, and, and uh, one morning I woke up with a start, I had a vision of what cover I wanted. I know exactly what I wanted, I said to my wife, she was sleeping, so she was, didn't pay any attention, but I, I, I said, you know, I know exactly what cover I want, I just, I have no art ability, so I need somebody to draw it. So I said, uh, I know what I do, I, I have a 25-year-old and a 22-year-old, they have lots of friends, they do all kinds of amazing things. I'll get one of the friends to do it, give him a hundred bucks. What 22 year old wouldn't do something for a hundred bucks? <laughs> Four friends I went through and each of them said, oh, it sounds like a lot of fun and they never, never produced any result. So finally I said, well, okay, I guess I'm doing it wrong. So I went to a faculty member at the college who's in the media department. Do you have any students? Oh yeah, no problem at all. And I have a student, here's what I want, a rough sketch, you know. A uh, uh, hundred bucks, oh, that sounds great, that sounds great. Never heard from her again. <laughs> So finally, I just decided that I, I, you know, I was going to have to do something. So I spent, uh, Michael, you were talking about this earlier. I spent about five minutes in asthmatose, drawing, <laughs> drawing R3, drawing R3. And, uh, and I went to, uh, do, do folks know, Adobe's uh, K-U-L-E-R. I think they pronounce a color, but K-U-L-E-R dot Adobe dot com. <clears throat> and it's where people upload color schemes. It's a, they, they, they upload free, you know, uh, would con contribute to color schemes. And so I spent about, my wife and I, uh, spent about 10 minutes finding three or four color schemes that we liked, and, and that one worked. So, you know, so there you go. That was, I, I don't think it's a work of art. Well, I guess it is a work of art, but it, uh, it's, uh, it's serviceable. It's okay. Save well, <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> so I, I, did, I gave her the 100 bucks. I gave her, I, but she, she, because she produced something. But, uh, but she never cashed a check because I think it was clear to her that I was not going to use it. So, so, uh, so my, every month my, when my wife reconciles the checkbook, she says, that girl is never going to come. Uh, no, I don't think she's ever going to. So that, that leaves us with the, the inside of the book. So, uh, so there's the inside of the book. The chief issue with the inside of the book seemed to be the binding margin because you can't really tell what's the binding margin. I can't tell. Maybe Barbara, you know all about it. But I can't tell what's the right binding margin until we produced a copy of the book, right, and got it and had a look. And the original binding margin was not right. I had to adjust it upwards a little bit. Um, and but then 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 it all seemed okay. That's the you know the geometry. It, is the latex? It says text width equals three hundred forty five points. Can you? Oh darn it! Can you read it? Text width equals three hundred. So so that's the original latex default. I did change the height, so I had to repaginate. And you know how it is when you open up the book, you look at the pagination, you say, oh that, that, you know that's okay, but I want to change that word. And, and anyway, it took much longer than I than you think it would take. Uh, like six months longer than you think it would take. <laughs> uh, but eventually, eventually I finished. Um, it's a good thing Lon wasn't waiting for me too long. Uh, the only issue that I had, just as a comment for somebody who might be thinking about doing the same thing, the only issue that I had, you hear so much about Sage here, is that there was a graphic on uh, page 295 from Sage. It was the times in the men's mile over the past century. Right, linear regression on the times in the men's mile over the past century, and uh, it had a non-embedded type three font error, and so you know didn't go through the system. Now that meant that I had to do something with Sage. 
So I was kind of sweating that because I thought, uh, you know, I don't, I'll, be, I'll be opening up Sage and fonts and uh, I was a little worried. So I spent some time Googling around, but when I was at CTAN, I got pretty good at Googling. I spent some time Googling around and I found this, that you have to, at the end of the, at the, end of the plot, you have to say typeset equals LaTeX. Who knew? So you have, to, you have to say typeset equals LaTeX and magically that embeds the type three fonts in the graphic and solve the problem. And I noticed when I found that solution that the, the bug ticket that, that put the solution in, I had to download a whole new Sage and everything, but the bug ticket that put the solution in was really not very old at all. So I really, you know, whoosh, I really dodged that bullet there. I, uh, so that, that, was, that, was, that was a big help. So uh, whoever that fellow is, I owe him a beer, but I don't know who he is, so I'm never gonna get it, I guess. Okay, so down to the, uh, down to the items of the, of the book, one of the things, remember I talked earlier about what you can do with colors and grays. One of the issues is, uh, is the gray. I used, in the, in the online PDF, I used the gray for a number of things, and uh, it just, it doesn't work, doesn't work on, on paper, at least doesn't work as well. I passed around the version that had it open to a specific page and asked people to look at the graphic. Here's that graphic. And uh, sometimes the gray comes out and sometimes it doesn't. And I can't make out why it does and why it doesn't. Changing the amount of gray doesn't seem to have all that great effect, et cetera. So I think I'm gonna have to change to dash lines or something that, that is trying to get too fancy with colors, even with the color gray, doesn't seem to be reliable on paper. At least hasn't been reliable for me, okay? And, and lesson two is that if you make a mistake, and when I made a mistake on the online version, you know, I'd say, oh, there's a mistake. And I compile, put a new version online, and never thought twice about it. But when you're holding the physical book in your hand, you know what happened here? I reset the uh, array, excuse me, the picture length. What do you call the length that, that determines pictures? Uh, please, what? Unit length, exactly right. I reset unit length at some point in the book, and 100 pages later, there's a, what apparently was a picture environment. God, these are the pictures that are scattered all over an acre or two. So, so, uh, so that was an embarrassing error, but I didn't think it was an embarrassing error in the PDF, but when it was in print, ooh, that was an embarrassing error. So that's funny, but, uh, but I had to get that fixed. So the result is, here's a typical inside page. I know I, I passed it around, but here's a typical inside page. There's some, uh, some math. You know, obviously some, some relatively plain text, a couple of diagrams, some tables. I think it thinks okay. You know, I think it came out sort of readable and perfectly usable. Not perfectly good, but, but perfectly usable. Certainly better than something you did at Kinko's. Here's a typical section page. That's, uh, those are exercises. Uh, unlike O'Reilly, I think you should be able to tell sections from subsections. So I, I, you know, try to make it reasonably bold and separate it from the text kind of stuff. And, uh, and a chapter page. And I, one reason for my putting up a chapter page is you see there that's, uh, that's actually not supposed to be gray, that's supposed to be red. So that's again an issue where color works in one circumstance and doesn't work in another. I'm not really willing to have them pay, to, to have people pay to print a book in color. So, you know, so you're, you're looking at having to make a compromise there. Okay, and then uh, uh, just to, uh, just, just to just to finish off here, that just a, the final result is that there I am. You know, I can show it to my mother, you know. <laughs> Mom, here, check this out, you know. What's that, Jim? <laughs> so, so there I am, I'm on, I'm on Amazon, and you, know, you can click on Add to Cart. Feel free to click on that, I guess no more than four times. So <laughs> feel free to click on that all you like. And uh, I felt especially good when I scrolled down because I noticed that I was book number 99763, which I thought was pretty good for a linear algebra book, not bad at all. And, uh, and, and you know, so I, I, I felt pretty good about that. That was a pretty, that was a pretty good feeling. So uh, if you're interested in, uh, in, in bringing, if you have some material like that, interested in bringing to paper, I, uh, I urge you, you might, uh, you might consider to, uh, uh, working with Lon. He was a big help, and he, you know, he knows a hell of a lot more than I do. So uh, uh, I felt like I was not uh, lost and alone in the wilderness in working with him. So that was a big help. Okay, I wonder if folks have any questions.
biggest problem is, is that uh, you sort of lose control a little bit of how things are show up there. I mean, the, the, the two versions that are on Amazon right now differ by 75 pages, one than the other. Okay. How do you do that? Yeah. How do you, how do you know that? I just looked at the um, looked at sides. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> is that right? And one has 75 pages more than the other. Okay. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> Well, see, that means one of them is much older than the other. Because right, I yeah, added new it. topics, right? Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Just the more expensive one. <laughs> <laughs> the, the classic. It's and, and the, the collector's edition. Right, right. the collector's edition. Right. But, the, but that bring, brings me to the topic. You know, you, you have this other grade of problems. Is that right? Well, that's another story. Um, <laughs> so I originally had it under the GNU. Well, 1996 is before any of that stuff existed. So I originally had, actually it's before the GNU documentation license completely, dis don't contradict me. Before the, GNU, <laughs> before the GNU documentation license completely existed, be, actually before the exception for the separate, uh, separate cover, cover existed. But anyway, so, uh, so this stuff was all old. So I had it under GNU, and then the Wikibooks people wrote me. They wanted to make a Wikibook out of it. They don't take GNU. So I, I needed to do one of these dual licensing things, but it always seems like it's not right to me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, so they wanted uh, CC BY, could that be right? Yeah, so, by, okay, so, by. See, so, so it's one or the other, whichever yeah. one you want. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens if somebody decides to write a couple of pages there and put their name in the co author? Carl, why don't you explain that to them? <laughs> since, since you're the one who, who, who has assured me that I'm doing the right thing. Well, uh, uh, you know, it, they can have it. I don't know what to say. I, I think that uh, uh, there's a reputation thing. You know, you can't uh, sort of take Linux and, and call it Jimix and, and put it up. <laughs> people will know. And I, I think in this case, uh, there's the same thing. You know, you can Google me and, and people just know. It's sort of like on CTAN. Why do people go to CTAN? And the answer is, well, because it's a reputation thing. People just have a built-up uh, feel for it. Uh, I think that's the answer. People can. And if they write, if they take two pages out of Jim's book and they write two pages of their own, that's fair. Right, but, but the answer is if somebody goes looking for my, but the concern is if somebody goes looking for my material and finds something from eight years ago, which contains typos that I've already fixed and et cetera, I, I'm concerned about that. But, but I think I addressed that to some extent when I talked about my web page. People go to the web page and they get the, the authoritative version. That's usually how people get the material. I think we uh, had a question at the back. Oh. It's just a comment. I, I recently pulled down a couple of books from my college experience and I noticed that the price was still in there. So a lot of those books were like, I'm going to date myself here, but they were like 10 to $12. <laughs> so these were, you know, books on physics and differential equations, et cetera, and heavy duty books. Those books today are like $250, and something has just gone away with the run of mine. So I, I think that more of this kind of thing is just a good choice for everyone. But linear algebra professors are all set. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, they have two choices. <laughs> two excellent choices. At least. Right, at least. Okay, let's thank Jim uh, once more.